through you. We bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. And we thank God for you. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Greet you in the spirit of truth and transformation. Amen. 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 Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you all for your financial contributions toward our sacred savings fund. Your donations help to keep the ministry financially solvent. So give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Amen. I also have not recognized the transition, publicly recognized the transition of uh, Mrs. Wadnita Abernathy. And uh, believe it or not, she was one of the first people to donate to Truth and Transformation Ministry. So let's give her a round of applause for her life and her legacy. Amen. The theme this month, as you have been told and shared with by Michelle, is zeal. Zeal represents spiritual enthusiasm. I'm going to re repeat it again. Zeal represents spiritual enthusiasm. And if you are emotionally enslaved to depression, anger, anxiety, and despair, you are not spiritually liberated. You are not spiritually free to express enthusiasm. Does everybody follow that? Yes. And recently it has come to my awareness that either we are going to continue to be mentally enslaved or we're going to be mentally free. See, either we're going to choose one or the other. We're going to come out of being lukewarm now. And we're going to step into the spirit within our own selves enthusiastically. Amen. 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 You are free and empowered through the spirit within you to live life to the fullest. Amen. And it is the season and it is the time to shift your thinking from Misery to mastery. It's time to shift. It's time to shift your thinking from misery to mastery. We've got to begin to see what's in our own soul and see what's in, what's in our being. Tell the truth to ourselves. Respect and love ourselves as a manifestation of God. And if we're not perfectly aligned with the Spirit, then we have to say, now I'm making the alignment. I'm making the proper adjustment. Because if we don't make the proper the proper adjustment, what is going to be the result in our mind, in our bodies, in our affairs? It's going to be hell. Amen. Hell is not a place, but a condition of mind. Mm -hmm. See, everything begins with your what? Thinking. That's right. And that thought that you have becomes a feeling. And then that feeling becomes a condition or an experience. So what I'm saying is now it's time for us to clean up much of the mess that we have internally within our soul and step enthusiastically with zeal into the spirit that's been with you all along. It's going to be with you from here until eternity. Amen? So let us all affirm together I am spiritually liberated. I am spiritually liberated. I am spiritually liberated. I am spiritually liberated. You're free in the spirit. It's our human self that get caught up in the troubles of the world. Amen? Amen. Number one, when you are spiritually liberated, you take charge of your mind. Mm -hmm. Your mind is the producer of all thoughts and is the initiated, initiator mm -hmm. of all activity in your world, good or bad. Amen? Amen? See, that's why the scripture says what? Be ye transformed through what? The renewal, the renewing of your mind. Your mind, your, your, when you take charge of your mind, you permanently shift negative energy out of it and you become completely renewed. Now, over these past 48 years, I've learned over and over again with each experience that I am the only person 
that things in my mind. Amen. You are the only person that thinks in your mind. Therefore, I'm what? The master of my emotions. No one can make me happy and no one can make me sad. So, spiritual liberation requires maturity and I want to emphasize that these are advanced spiritual teachings. Amen. See, this is advanced spiritual teachings. See, this is more than religion. This is you connecting with the spirituality that's already inside of you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, we're not criticizing or putting anyone down, but somebody across the street is teaching that you got to reach up and look far and wide to be able to see God. The only place that you need to look is right within your own soul, Amen. within your own being. Amen. See, even the scripture tells you that heaven is where? Within. Amen. See, there's a treasure that's what? Within you. Right. Don't look here. Don't look there. The kingdom of heaven is within you. And Jesus went so far as to say the kingdom of heaven is already at hand. I say it every week so that we can continue to what? Connect to that knowingness. That when we're out and about and taking care of our weekly duties, that we know that the Spirit of God is with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Amen. Amen. So you are the master of your emotion. And spiritual liberation requires maturity. It means that we have to what? Grow up. See, we may be 35, but we still act like we're 15. Amen? Amen. If you don't make a decision to grow, you will be psychologically, psychologically, your psyche will be what? Impaired, which leads to mental and emotional death. So we have a lot of people who are the walking dead. That's what the story of Lazarus was about. It wasn't really physically dead. It was dead on a mental and emotional level. And when he became, when he when he got the touch of the Christ consciousness within his soul, he became what? Resurrected. Amen. All of us are Lazarus and we need to be what? Resurrected. Amen. 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 See, this is how the scripture comes alive for us. It has to be practical. It can't be about a man named Lazarus way uh, 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 6,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. It can't be about that. It's about me and you. Amen. Amen. We are what? Every character in the Bible. Amen. Amen. And there are many things that I could have allowed to hurt my feelings on this journey as a minister. Amen. Many toils and snares. But if I allow myself to get caught up with it, to be trapped by it, to be traumatized by it, I wouldn't be fulfilling my spiritual mission. Amen? Amen. And the same is true for you. Each of us have to decide that the truth can be healed. Amen. Amen. That's what our spiritual luminaries, many people um, see this banner, but this, this is what our spiritual luminaries represent. Mary McLeod Bethune, Marcus Garvey, Rosa Parks, Francis Wills, and George Washington Carver. They all demonstrated that the truth can be lived. And that, that that same truth, that same spirit that was in them is the same spirit that's within me and you. Amen? Amen? So we have to make a decision. Truth teachings force you to make a decision about how you want to live life. Amen? Amen? And how you're going to reshape your life if you're not in alignment with the spirit. Amen? So you are a spiritual master. Mastering the lessons of life. I've said it over and over and over again. If you don't know who you are, Take that affirmation. I am a spiritual master, mastering the lessons of life. So we've got to begin to elevate our consciousness and expand our consciousness in knowing who and what we are. Amen? And you can't move through life. This is another point. You can't move through life based upon what other people think. 
if I base what I thought, if I base what other what other people think of me, I, on my self concept and my understanding of me, I wouldn't even be in I wouldn't even be in ministry because I'm doing ministry that is completely what different. Everybody's not doing ministry in, in a way that's empowering. That's right. That is liberating. That's right. See? And there are some people who've come here who are afraid of it. Thank you, God, in me, as me. Do you mean that I am God? <laughs> See, but it's time out for making do. It's time out for being what? Mentally and emotionally enslaved. That's right. See, many of us, I see the chains may be off. But we're still enslaved in our minds. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of what Carter G. Woodson wrote, the miseducation of what? The Negro. And he has that picture of that black person on the cover of that book with a chain around their head. Meaning that we, many of us have a chain. We are mentally enslaved and emotionally enslaved in our minds. It's our minds that have got to break free of this thing now. See, it's the mind that will impose its limitations based upon how you program it. Your mind is a set of programs. See, and you being programmed, either you're going to program your own mind right. or you're going to allow somebody else to program it for you. And see, we're going to talk a little bit more about that later in my third point. It's time for us to get out of allowing other people to program us. Because many of the responses that we give are really not even our own. They are conditioned. Does, does everybody follow that? Mm -hmm. So let us affirm together, I am in charge of my thoughts and my emotions. I am in charge of my thoughts and my emotions. I am in charge of my thoughts and my emotions. I am in charge of my thoughts and my emotions. See, if you just use that as your mantra, your prayer through the week, you'll see a transformation in your life. Why do we affirm? We affirm here because we know that our thoughts have to be what? Firm in our mind. Prayer is definite spiritual thinking. Somewhere along the way, many of us have been brainwashed to believe that it is begging and that you've got to convince what? An external God of what's true for you. You're the one that's got to get what? Self-convinced. It's your human self that has to align itself with the spirit that's within you so that you can get done what you need to get done. Amen. 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 Number two. When you are spiritually liberated, you have a divine mission. You realize and accept that you have a divine mission. Now, the scripture says, I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Now, that means that you're not just some old, any old body that popped up on the planet that's here to do nothing. Does everybody follow that? That you're not here to be a joker and you're not here to be somebody's fool. That you're here and that your life has great meaning and that we have to, what, then engage ourselves in constructive activity and behaviors. Amen? Amen? That's why we constantly affirm I respect and love myself as a manifestation of God. That's, that's a prayer too. If you wake up with that in the morning, your day will go much more smooth. Yes, sir. Amen. See, it gives you a framework, a guide through which you can interact with others and know what to do from one moment to the next. I respect and I love myself as a manifestation of God. See, when you respect yourself, you will execute your divine mission. Now, some of us say, well, I don't know what my mission is. You don't have to reach far and wide. You just have to do some meditation and get down within your soul and ask the question, what am I here for? You'll get an answer. See, but many of us are afraid of the responsibility that comes with that answer. Amen? 
And in 1999, I realized the high calling. I didn't expect to go into the ministry, but the high calling was upon me to become a minister, and that high calling led to another high calling to develop truth and transformation ministries. Amen. Now, I did know as a child that I like to teach and that I like to be a facilitator to help bring about a greater understanding, a greater awareness, but I didn't know that it would unfold in my role as a minister. Amen? See, and when you are spiritually liberated, you realize that one high calling leads to another. The high calling leads to another high calling. See, it's your birthright to move from what? Glory to greater glory. Not from misery to more misery. See, and many of us are still going up the rough side of the mountain. It's time to stop affirming that. It's time for us to use some spiritual understanding and wisdom to know what to do and when to do it. Amen? Amen. See, when you are truly spiritually liberated, you transform behaviors that keep you mentally enslaved. Depression, anxiety, anger, and despair. All of those emotions that we go through that are negative really are the different faces of fear. Mm. And when I was counseling with someone this week, I let them know that fear is just a feeling that I am separate from God. That I feel separate. I don't feel in alignment with the all-knowing presence that's within me. See, you can never be separated. So that's why I hammer it in over and over and over. This is what's going to empower you. Thinking that something outside of you is going to come in and do the work. No, the work is done in you, through you, and as you. That, that's how the work gets done. What have I said before? These are God's hands. This is God's leg and feet. See, if something's got to be moved, it is up to me to take the responsibility to move it. Nothing's going to shift out of my out of my life that's negative without me engaging and involving myself in the total process of it. Mm -hmm. God is going to fix it for me. It doesn't work that way. See, an external God is not going to get in the midst of your affairs. It hadn't worked. It ain't going to never work. So you might as well get up out of it this morning. Amen. <laughs> So let us all affirm together, executing my divine mission frees me to express my high calling. Executing my divine mission frees me to express my high calling. Executing my divine mission frees me to express my high calling. Executing my divine mission frees me to express my my high calling. See, there's a high calling for you. And you're not going to have a moment's satisfaction until you express it. Does everybody follow me? That's right. And some of us, you know, may choose to say, well, I believe in coming back. You can come back. You want to believe in the whole thing of reincarnation. I think that that may be a possibility. See, but it'd be just like you repeating the third grade over and over and over again. See, on somewhere along our life's journey, see, and life is not just here on this planet, it extends beyond this planet. Mm -hmm. Life is what? Infinite. So somewhere along this life journey, you've got to be graduating. Mm -hmm. Does everybody follow that? Yeah. That's the same as what I said earlier. You've got to what? Spiritually mature. Maturity is this not means in our body, it means that we have to mature in our what? Mind and in our thinking. Amen. Number three. Now, this is a part that's going to be a little controversial and a little tough for us, but we're going to get through it together. Amen. Amen. When you are spiritually liberated, you realize, as Harriet Tubman, and I could have put Martin Luther King here, 
You realize, as Harriet Tubman and Martin Luther King, that you deserve to live in an environment where justice reigns supreme. Now, the scripture tells us, let, this, let justice roll like a river and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And unfortunately, we live in a society where justice does not flow like a river and righteousness does not move as an ever-flowing stream. That's the reality. See, and part of this reality is because we turn a blind eye to certain things and think it's okay that it's that way that we'll get our reward in heaven. So you're supposed to be getting your reward right here. Amen. 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 Every day you get up is your day of judgment. You're getting paid right here by what you think and how you feel specifically about yourself. But we live in a system, as I've said before, of white supremacy. And that has conditioned us to believe that it's okay was all right sometimes for us to be exploited or physically harmed or, or murdered. White supremacy is a total system. You're not just running into a little bit of racism on your job. That's right. White supremacy is a total system construct that operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It operates in economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. We have been further conditioned to render false statements of forgiveness when we have been terrorized by white supremacy. See? And I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm making an assessment. I'm not, I'm not casting judgment on anybody. But I'm making, I have to be able to make an assessment to be able to spiritually understand what it is that I see in the environment. Okay. And so we have been conditioned to give false statements. And why do I say false statements of forgiveness? It's because unless you forgive those who are your mirror image and that are closest to you, i.e., our black family members. We got some people in our families that we don't like and we ain't gonna never forgive. Many of us. Let's just be honest. We don't like our neighbors that live down the street. My black neighbor, you don't know what I go through with <laughs> What about this black supervisor? She thinks she's better than me. So we've got all kinds of things. But then yet, when somebody's murdered, and come, then we come out and say, oh, I forgive. Mm -hmm. You haven't even learned even to even forgive yourself. Many of us are caught up on our own uh, self-guilt trips. Mm -hmm. But yet when somebody does us wrong, specifically if they are white, because we have been trained and programmed that mm -hmm. way, we will say, I forgive. Not really understand what forgiveness, inherent in forgiveness, means that you are able to what? Process a situation and inherit in forgiveness because you have processed it, then you are able to release the negativity around it and understand why those events occur. Amen. Amen. Now, if somebody shoots your mother or your father, and then that very night you're going to go on TV and say, I forgive them, you're psychologically confused. And we need to stop name calling and talking about people of Uncle Tom's and all of that. That's not going to free us either. That's right. We have been a people where white supremacy has been put on us. And because we don't understand how the mind works, we haven't been able to freely step into our liberation. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be up to other folk to free us. Mm -hmm. It's only going to be up to us. And that is dependent upon what we think and how we think and how we feel about ourselves. Amen. 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 Now, Francis Wells, who is a psychiatrist and our spiritual luminary, represents divine understanding. And I'm going to uh, play an audio where she talks about 
for how forgiving white people for acts of racism is mental illness on the part of black people. Now, some of this is, you, you wouldn't expect to hear this in church. But because, as I said earlier, that this is a different setting. See, this needs to be talked about. This needs to be unfolded in a house of truth, which is what a church is or a spiritual center is. So we're going to listen to the words of wisdom from Frances Wilson. Will you cue up the tape and make sure that the camera is focused on her picture, please? All right. This, this recording is about um, 10 minutes. Uh, I can long. only repeat it. Um, that I think that um, you see this automatic forgiveness uh, when it comes to black people being harmed or killed or injured by people who classify themselves as white. We don't hear people who are white if they have, uh, feel they have sustained some injury or harm from a black person. We don't hear them saying, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. And I was saying in a talk uh, recently, uh, no one asked the white females who lined up and were accusing Bill Cosby of having sexually or date raped them. And no white person would say to them one or more for all of them, uh, a long time has passed. Don't you think it's time for you to forgive Mr. Cosby? Nobody would ever think of that. You see, no one would anybody think to ask a Semite of the Jewish religion, um, well, have you forgiven the German people? Have you forgiven the Nazis for what they did? You, you see, nobody would even think of saying that. So I think that it is a part of um, black people's tradition from tradition from the time of enslavement, you see, when the slave master could beat the black person, and I could just envision the black person being beaten and the slave master or the slave mistress would be saying, say that you forgive me, you see, and then giving them another lash, say that you forgive me. And so the black person doesn't have a choice but to say, I forgive, Master, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive, um, and I don't want to show any disrespect to the mother of Mr. Walker. I mean, I certainly understand uh, what has happened to black people and where that pattern comes in. When we were in formal slavery, uh, I heard a white female explain to a young black man uh, this was at a race relations institute a number of years ago. And the young black man in a small group discussion, he said, I don't believe in racism, I'm a Christian. And an older white female said to him, son, we, meaning we white people, gave you that tradition. We gave you that religion. And we emphasized three things. Slave, obey your master, turn the other cheek, and you will get your reward in heaven. And so that is the yoke that black people, uh, I say by and large, are still under. Uh, and most black people are not thinking about um, or understanding that we are in a total system structure of racism. But let me say this as well. When they talk about cases of domestic violence, the victim of the violence, be it a male or be it a female, be it black or be it white, no one emphasizes and says you should forgive the person who has been beating you. You see, they are admonished to respect themselves and go and file a complaint with the police department. Further press charges and stand by those charges. 
Because if you keep saying to someone who is beating you, I forgive, that means come back again and hit me again. And then I forgive you, come back again. And even when you are raising children, you know, if you correct the child and say, don't do X, Y, Z, and the child goes ahead and does it, and then the child says, I'm sorry. Okay. The next time, the parent again says, do not do this. This is incorrect behavior. And the child goes ahead and does it. And then the child says, I'm sorry. Now, the parent who fails to respect him or herself and really fails to respect the child will just say, okay, you're forgiven over and over and over again. Then you are raising someone who's going to be a sociopath because you're not saying, all right, you have apologized several times, but now you're going to have to face the consequences for your behavior. If the parent respects him or herself, then the parent will take that position. And if we as black people decide that we are going to respect ourselves, and this is one of the things that has happened to black people in the 500 years of our oppression, including the phase of slavery, form of slavery, is that black self-respect has been completely annihilated. And so, you know, we say, okay, I forgive, I forgive, and then we take the pain and frustration out on each other. It's just like in South Africa, truth and reconciliation. So the people who brutalize black people are allowed to go unpunished. But the pain that is inside of black people goes out towards one another. And the system of racism and white supremacy continues. So I am making the recommendation for black people's mental health that black people take the position that all of these, all of these things that we are dealing with the killing of black men every week, every other day, the incarceration of black men, the unjust sentencing, uh, gentrification, the removal of black people from urban centers across this country, that all of this is the face of racism, white supremacy. And black people have to take the position. We're not going to be in the position of saying we forgive. No, what we're going to insist upon is, number one, that racism, white supremacy as a total system structure be recognized. And number two, when that system has been brought to an end and replaced with a system of justice, then the consideration of forgiveness is that that won't even be in order because the system of injustice will have been removed and a system of justice established. Now that's my position as a black psychiatrist and I would say that I'm certainly recommending that as important for black people's mental health in this system that the foundation of the position is that we are going to have respect for ourselves second to none. And instead of denying and making apologies for the system of racism, white supremacy, that we are going to hold people who classify themselves as white, because the only reason for the white classification is to take advantage of the established and structured system of racism and white supremacy. And that we are going to hold people who classify themselves as white responsible. We're not going to spend any time hating white people. But we are going to hold every person who classifies him or herself as white responsible 
for changing the system. If they want to take a position that they're not racist, but then stop the people who classify themselves as white who are. Don't come and join black people. Take the John Brown position and stop the people who are engaging in the practice of racism, white supremacy. And, you know, that's not just calling somebody nigger or So I thank you for engaging me and listening to that. It's because we've got to begin to do what? We've got to expand our understanding. And I believe that that's what Francis Wellesley represents, is divine understanding. And so therefore, I am recommending her book to be included in your library. The book is The Isis Papers, The Keys to the Colors, written by Dr. Frances Wilson. And Dr. Frances Wilson based her book on Neely Fuller's book, which is entitled The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, a textbook, workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, white supremacy. Now, I didn't bring all of this up so that you could go out, as she said, in the, in the piece, to go out and hate white folk. That's just like turning on the furnace and letting the window, and letting the, all the heat go out the window. It's a waste of energy and time. We have to constructively use our time and energy to be effective on this planet. See, and not waste our energy and time criticizing other black people, call them Uncle Toms and a sellout and all of that. We need to be on task doing what we need to be doing. If we want to see justice reign, you may not like what somebody else is doing, you be on task with what you are doing, what you need to do every day. To clean up the stuff in your families. All that negativity, what did she say? We have internalized. All this negativity, self-hatred, and then spew it out at other people who look like us. So all of that's got to be transformed. See, it's the system that causes these negative conditions, but we are the ones that are gonna to have to transform it and make it a new and better world, amen? amen. Even Gandhi said, it is the Negro that's going to bring justice and peace to the planet. So I, I admonish you, I advise you to please get on task with who you are and, and, and be on task with your God self and do what you are called to do. That's why I'm in my respective place as a minister. We all have a role and each and if each one of us take on the commitment of fulfilling our mission, this world would be a better place. Mm -hmm. That's all that our 12 spiritual luminaries did. They fulfilled their role. They fulfilled their mission. So it's time for you to do the same. You have been transformed. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much.